of the Vice President of the Science Team. Thanks very much, everyone, for coming. Oh, thanks for that. Um, okay, so this afternoon, we've got a presentation for you from Dr. Raul Barreto. Uh, Dr. Barreto is a, an economics lecturer, senior economics lecturer, I think, yeah, and uh, also a successful businessman in his own right. So uh, he'll be speaking to us this afternoon about some basic principles of market economics and uh, the real world application. So it should be a very interesting presentation. Um, if I could just ask that uh, everybody turn off any mobile phones or on silence, that would be great. Okay, and then we'll have uh, some surveys at the end and uh, maybe a bit of question and answer sort of session. Okay, thanks very much. And uh, I'll hand over to Dr. Breda. Uh, first, thanks, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to address you guys. Um, thanks to Nick as well. Um, so, prior to thinking about what I was going to say, um, what I did is read something about your organization and exactly what we expected from this first meeting. And what I highlighted here is fundamental principles of free market economics in a presentation approximately 15 minutes. Okay, good. So, no worries. We will do that as best we can. Um, but before we get into it, so I want a quick, quick question here. How many people here are first year, second year, third year? Who was first year? Second year. All right, third year. Okay, second year. Uh, what are you studying? Commerce? What are we studying? Cutting what? Engineering. <laughs> Commerce. <laughs> My point being is if you study commerce, you will have me as your lecturer. Has anyone here been in my lectures before? Cool. Good. Good. No, that's good. That's good. Because then, then if you had, then you would have heard some of this before. Um, all right. Well, I guess we could just kind of get into it. Well, the first thing we probably want to talk about is... What is economics? Economics, first of all, is a behavioral science. Which means that when we are going to do, or economists in particular do, make um, a set of assumptions about what governs people's behavior. And then from those assumptions, we come up with some basically logical conclusions. That said, economics is often called the study of choice. And what we wish to study as economists um, is why, why choose, what to choose, and how to choose. Our goal, hopefully is self-evident, is by understanding why people choose, what people choose, and how they choose it, we ourselves can make better choices. And then the idea there, of course, is to be able to make better, more effective choices in the business world, and ultimately imagine your choices. Um, the choices you make today obviously have tremendous long-run implications, um, and the choices you make tomorrow are going to have, you know, short-run implications. The point being is that the better informed you are, and the better your understanding of those around you, they being your colleagues or your opponents in business, the better choices you can make. Okay. So, um, that is going to be the focus of my talk, is why choose, what to choose, and how to choose it. So, the first question is, is why make choices? Well, this may seem as if it's somewhat self-evident, but a fair bit of analysis can go into um, considering why we actually make choices we do. Um, in microeconomics, we have the thing, a thing called the axioms of choice, which are seven fundamental rules that we will assume govern everyone's behavior. Um, I'm not going to go into those because they set they're somewhat tedious. Instead, we'll just make some generalizations. The first one is the fundamental assumption of non-satiation. We assume, and I don't assume this, I believe this, that we as individuals have unlimited wants. We can never be satisfied. And the example of this is Bill Gates walking down the street 
and he sees a one dollar coin on the ground, will he stoop to pick it up? Or will he be like, I am Bill Gates, I am so wealthy, it is not my, it's not worth my effort to even stoop for that one dollar. I do not believe Bill Gates will do that. I think Bill Gates will stoop and pick up that one dollar, like anyone else. In other words, it is better to have one billion and one dollars than it is to have one million dollars. It is always the case that more is always better than less. And you can take this, and this is, this, these are, when the, I say these are fundamental rules, these are global axioms. If you can imagine yourself, is it better to have four beers than three beers? Ten beers than nine beers? Always. You can always give it away. You don't have to sit there and drink them all. It is always better to have more than less. Therefore, if that is true, therefore we as individuals, our behavior is governed by our unlimited wants. Now the problem is that we live in a limited world. Um, and our existence, we have a limited existence. So if you can imagine, we are limited by space, we are limited by time, we are limited by resources. Now combine that, combine the fact that we have unlimited wants in a, in a limited world it leads to a concept called scarcity. Scarcity simply means that there is competition for everything, being that everything is limited. And those who are chasing after this limited everything want it all. Each one of us wants it all. Well, what does that mean? Obviously, it's some kind of method of distribution because this competition involves. Well, the method of distribution is called the price mechanism. Price mechanism ultimately means anything that is scarce has to have a price. Well, since everything is scarce, everything has a price. There are no exceptions whatsoever. We could get into, we could talk for the next 45 minutes for me to prove to you that scarcity is a global fact of life and that everything is indeed scarce. Your life is a scarce commodity. The fact is, you will live a certain amount of time. You will be a certain amount of time in university. Therefore, your time has value. If you were, if you were immortal, would your time have any value? No, not at all. Therefore, it, the fact remains, we are beings of unlimited wants in a limited world. So that's why we choose. That's why you have to choose. That's why you have to make choices. Now, what are you going to choose? Well, in economics, we have a fundamental assumption called rationality. Rationality in economics does not mean um, good choices. What rationality means is that all choices are perceived to be good. In other words, a rational actor always takes the best of all possible alternatives. The choice of you being here today is a rational choice. You have all these alternatives, where else you can be. If you've chosen to be here, therefore, you obviously believe this is the best of all your possible alternatives. That is what a rational actor is. Now, consider what this means. Because the idea of best is a subjective idea. It is not necessarily an absolute notion. For example, the fellow who wakes up in the morning, gets up and goes, what am I going to do today? I think I'm going to go rob the servo. Gets up, picks up a screwdriver, goes over the servo, robs the servo. Of course, there are bloody cameras everywhere. The guy picked up within 45 minutes of doing this car. When he made the choice to rob the servo, he perceived it as the best of all possible alternatives. The fact that he's a numbskull <laughs> has no bearing on his rationality. Rationality means perceived best alternative. He thought, in his ultimate stupidity, that that was a good idea. 